Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to another episode of Inside a Boiler Casing where I get up close and personal with different makes and models of boilers. Now the boiler we're going to look at today is this Worcester Bosch RI only boiler. Now Worcester was formed in 1962 in the old vinegar works in Worcester. Uh, but they were manufacturing oil boilers, not gas boilers. In 1987, uh, Worcester Engineering changed their name to become the Worcester Heat System. And in 1992, they became the company we know now, Worcester Bosch. In 1990, they released the 924 electronic boiler. And in 1996, the CDI was launched. In 2005, we then got the Green Star condensing boiler range. So, as all the inside the boiler casing, we're going to start at the top of this boiler and we're going to work our way down and we're going to get close and have a look and see what it's like. So let's get on with it. Okay, so this Mark 1 RI boiler came out in 2007 on the 1st of May and went through production to the 1st of August 2008. The model we're going to be looking at today is a very early 2008 model so one of the first ones the mark one out there so let's get on with it now we're starting at the top this is the turret so the two ports you can see here this is our flue gas analyzer port this is our flue integrity port now the boiler we're looking at unlike all the others which have been combi boilers this is a heat only boiler so you can see this is our flow and return pipes which would go off to feed the cylinder as well as a central heater so if we look on the top, it's just basically held in with three screws. And again, if you slack it, the other screw is around here, which is a pain to get to when you're flowing straight out the back. Not a great idea. But this ring does undo and you can turn the turret left, right. Just making sure and remembering that you can get at the sample points. Now the plate you can see here is what we're going to be removing soon to help us to remove the baffles from inside the boiler. Now when you're servicing this boiler you must make sure you do a sweet test around these seals. I'll explain that later as we get there. So let's get this cover off and let's get inside. Now to remove the cover there's a screw there, a screw there at the top, so the two at the top and if we come down to the bottom you'll see there's these two clamps, there's one here and there's one here to move. So you undo those four screws. These actually stay in place. And that's how easy it is to set the cover off. Now let's have a close up tour of this uh, boiler. So the first thing we can see here is the fan. So again, like a lot of condensing boilers now, the faster the fan goes, the more um, gas it sucks in. Now we're going to see it a bit more closer later but on the back of here, on the back of the fan there is a valve inside there where the air and gas mixes so on the service that needs to be checked but we'll look at that later. So let's go back up to the top, this is after the fan, this is where the gas and air being sucked in for combustion is then comes down into the burner. Now this burner is a cup burner which is 360 degrees around but it burns downwards as well. Okay, So the products of combustion come from the burner at the top, burn down into the plastic sump then out through the sump and then out through the flue and then out through the turret. So it's a downward burner. Now um, what you can see on the top here, this is our overeat stack for the uh, heat exchanger and the that you can see in the background the orange colored thing is the MTC for the flow okay so there are the sensors at the top and then up the, here you've got your spark electrodes and at the back you can just see them the blue where there's three wires that's the flame rectification so now then this what you can see here is actually the flow so the water comes in through the bottom up here and then spirals around the circular heat exchanger and comes out through the flow pipe. Now this what you can see here is a bleed for the air um, when you first fill up. Now you've got to be careful with this tube that you don't drip water onto the fan or you will blow it. So uh, 
that's one thing you've got to watch out for. So what can happen in this boiler is it can get blocked here because the resistance coming through here can make all the muck congregate here. So what happens then is this heat exchanger gets like a ribbon around it. Some people call it kebabbing. I don't know why. I've never had a kebab in my life so I wouldn't be able to tell whether it looks like a kebab or not. Anyway, so you'll see it, it's, it's, you'll see the rib sticking through. Now, do you need to change the heat exchanger when it's ribbed? Well, if it's leaking, yes. If it's not leaking and it's cleaned out, then technically it should be okay. But a lot of guys, as soon as they rib, will change this heat exchanger. So, uh, on the top of the burner now, we're gonna look at that a bit closely and I'll go through how we're going to remove all this and you can see inside and, and how it works um, after that. So if we come back down now, we can see our gas valve. So this point here is our inlet te test pressure and uh, Worcester say your inlet test pressure must be no more than a 2 millibar difference from your working pressure in your meter. Again, we'll have a look what the manufacturer's instruction says on that. It's slightly different than most boilers because the test nipple is on the gas valve, not on the inlet of the uh, appliance. So this here is our minimum um, for our uh, fluid gas analyzing, and that little one there is a maximum. Now this is just a dust cover. You take this dust cover off with a screwdriver, then you need a four milli Allen key then to adjust. And this one is a two and a half milli Allen key to adjust that as well. So this is the, the, the gas valve. This what you can see here is, flu set, is the flu sensor. So this, is, this will knock the boiler off if the flu temperature is too high. Also you can see this orange um, tube here. When we, take the, when we take the actual fan off, you'll see that more point. So that goes up to the air pressure switch, which is just at the back there. And this sensor and the air pressure switch and the higher limit staff, they're all linked together. Okay. So one of those faults, it will knock the boiler off and give you the, the, the same fault. Okay. So down at the bottom here, we've got the sump. And this sump will need to be, the cover will need to be taken off on every service and make sure there's no aluminium debris in there because this might be stainless steel on the outside but inside here is aluminium <laughs> still not the one I've said it right or not uh, heat exchanger now when we do take this burner off and I haven't got the tools for removing the baffles so I'm gonna have to think of something also if you buy the tool for the baffle it all comes with a brush to clean it off so that's a quick tour around this RI boiler. So let's get this fan taken off so you can look inside the boiler even more closely. Now, just remember, before you actually remove the cover, always remember your safe isolation procedure and always use your non-contact voltage indicator to make sure your appliance isn't live before you touch it. So that's the health and safety thing only. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the fan off um, and all this components here. Now, no gas going to this, so you, you know, technically there's a gas isolation valve underneath, and you turn the gas off for it. Now, first thing I need to do is remove this pin here. So, let's get a flat screwdriver. So, let's uh, get this pin out here. Okay, so quite easy, this is a quick release on the gas, so the pin comes out, and this gas pipe now pulls up. Now, holding the actual um, fan and um, assembly in is basically just this one nut and these wires here. So I'm just going to disconnect the wire from here and from here. Okay. So I need to take this nut now off. So it's a 13 milli spanner. That's the nut off, and then there's a retaining clip here, which you also need to remove off. So that now will make it so I can pull this forward. Just get rid of that drip. So it unclips, and then just lift it out. 
Now, how easy is that to take out? So now we've got this fan out, let's have a look in here a bit more closely. Now we've removed the fan, we can have a closer look now at this uh, valve on the back. So this is where the air comes in for combustion and this is where our gas is. So while we've got this out, we're supposed to inspect this, make sure it's not cracked or brittle because we don't want any gas leaks. This is where our test point is coming from the front to do our pressure testing. Now if I wanted to take this off and check the valve inside, what you've got to do is press this tab. To undo this, I'm going to try it with one hand and a foot. So you twist it like that and then it comes off. And now you can test. So this is a rubber flap here, which has, is a, a, can be replaced. And this is what the pressure of, it's only very slight, this is what the suction of the, the fan overcomes to allow the air and the gas in. So the more that opens, obviously, because that's where the gas is coming in, the more the gas and air is going to be coming through. So you can see they both come into two chambers at the back here. So let's get this off so you can see. Okay. where they mix, where they come through. So, air on one side, gas on the other. So that's important to check that and make sure it's it's not corroded or it hasn't got any holes in. So that's what the back of the fan looks like and you can see the, the impeller there inside. That's the fan. Let's have a look inside. So, Air pressure switch. Now if you follow the air pressure switch down, it's connected into where the flue goes. Now sometimes you'll see this where there's a white cap over here. So if there's a white cap on the flue system here, it means there's no air pressure switch. So you can see the gas valve more closely now. You can see the flue system. So you come up the flue, you can then see it's all plastic all the way in. And then this you can see here is where the air comes in for combustion. Okay, so that's the flue system. So once you actually take the burner out, there's not a lot of stuff in there. So we're gonna get this off here now. We're gonna get the downward cut burner out, and then we're gonna try and remove the baffle from inside without a baffle removing tool. So let's have a go at that now. Now let's remove this top of the burner. As you can see, this is the nut, which I've just used a 13 milli spanner. And this is that retaining clip there. So if I undo the, the nut with my fingers now, you can see it's come up. Okay. But what I want to do first is just remove these electrodes. You can see this earth connection is slightly damaged. So that must have been stiff to get off at one point if anybody's tried to. That's removing the electrodes. <laughs> Not the easiest thing in the world to get out. As you can see they're now out. Okay. So I can now undo this knot and you can now see the plate and now this cover removes. So what you can now see there is the gasket. Okay, and this gasket must be replaced every time you take this cover off. Now the electrode should just come out now with the gasket. The gasket does look in good nick, it doesn't look like it's been damaged in any way. Okay, so that's the that's the gasket out. I'll say, like I say, it needs to be replaced every time. Now before we build this back up, let's have a closer look at the spark electrode. So the two you can see here, this is your spark generator. This is your flame rectification, so you can see they're quite uh, dirty. So they would need a good clean up. Now, some guys use a wire brush on them, some guys use a file. And again, your, your gap there, I think is four milli on this. So um, they would need to be cleaned up. I always use a file and a wire brush to make sure we get rid of all the corrosion on there. And if it's too badly corroded, then you would have to replace. You can see how thick this gasket is and what good condition this gasket is. So maybe uh, it was changed, but I don't know, don't look like it. So that's a closer look at the spark electrodes before we stick it all back together. Now, inside here is 
the cup burner. Okay, so let's see if we can get the cup burner out. So out comes the cup burner. So you can see that's your downward cup burner. It's not in massive uh, amounts of corrosion on there, but uh, and you can see the little tab there where it will fit in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to try and get these baffles out inside without the baffle tool because it comes with a special tool to be able to remove it, which I don't have. So let's see if I can actually do it without the baffle tool. Now I've removed the plate, so let's have a look down this plate, what I've removed. And now you can see inside the heat exchanger, you can see the baffle inside what we have to remove. <laughs> now, God knows how I'm going to do this without the baffle tool, but we're going to have a go. So I'm going to see if I can find something to remove that and get it out. So you can see without the baffle removing tool, this is going to be pretty hard. So I don't know if you can actually see this very well, but I've actually clipped a cable tie, or three cable ties, over the baffle. So I've just lifted the baffle out now. Should be able to get it with my fingers. So, that's the first baffle out, and that's what I've invented. So three cable ties, one in a circle and two used as a handle to get the first one out. All I've got to do now is get the smaller one out. Let's have a go at that now. So basically the same idea now. All I've got to do is get this one out. All I need now is another pair of bands. So as you can see, I've actually got them out. So this is the one that's the furthest one down. This one sits on top of here inside the boiler. So that's what they look like. And I've used my little gadget, which I've just invented because I haven't got a removal tool to actually get them out. So that's gone over the top of there like that. And then I've reduced the size and then that's gone like that. Let's get them out. So that's the baffles. This one hmm, needs a bit of a clean up, but doesn't look that bad. Not really damaged. This one, hmm, again, I think a good clean up. It will be fine. So that's the baffles, what you would find inside this uh, Worcester RI. So now you can see inside, so I've just used my torch, you can see the bottom. So that's not looking in bad nick. Not the worst I've ever seen anyway. So considering I don't think this has ever been taken off, that's, uh, that's not in bad nick. So that's looking down from the cover we removed, down into the burner. So uh, you can see the bottom. So. So, when we've got it all back together again, let's have a look down the bottom here, get this panel removed. So there are two screws holding this uh, PCB cover on there, there's one there and one there which I've already removed. So we can just lift this off now, there's a hook to lift it off and drop it back down. So now you can see here, this is our gas connection, so our gas isolation valve. You can now see that that is our flow pipe because you can see it goes off and then up through to the heat exchanger. You can now see that this is our return pipe coming off the bottom of the heat exchanger. This thing you can see here is the holding knot which actually holds the full heat exchanger into the boiler. And then this is our condensate siphon. They do about four different siphons for different models on, on the uh, Worcesters. So that's basically all you've got inside. So that's a drain for draining your return on your full system. Remember, there's no pump, there's no three way valve, there's no plate to plate, there's no expansion vessel. This would go on a vented system. If you wanted to turn it to a sealed system, you would have to add all those components. So that's what it looks like in, on the inside, at the bottom. Now, while we're at the bottom of this um, Worcester R. Uh, I heat only boiler. 
going into our um, fluid gas analyzer readings, our maximum minimums is different on this boiler than it is on any other Worcester. So the black thing you can see here is where we set it into normal, min maximum or minimum. So if you've ever wondered what this little white peg is here, when you take the front cover off, this is what helps you go into maximum and minimum. So it slides in like that. Now you can see that says normal, maximums at the top there and minimums to the left. So if that should be on normal, which it is, you can see the little arrow. Now if I turn the arrow straight up, that's on now maximum. So that's maximum heating power. And then if I turn that down to, the, to that side, you'll see the little arrow's going to minimum. So that's how you would do your flue gas analyzer readings on minimum maximum and then don't forget when you're finished to put it back on normal otherwise it'll stay in maximum or minimum so that's what that little white peg's for what you see in the cover which is always there and that's how you put it in maximum and minimum for flue gas analyzing so i hope that helps so before we finish up i just want to talk about this little test point here what this is is the fan um, pressure test point so you would connect a digital manometer onto here and turn your boiler on to maximum. So when your boiler's on maximum, you're looking for this boiler, which is a 24RI. You're looking for a figure of a natural gas of minus 3.1 or greater. Okay. So depending upon the kilowatts of the appliance will depend on what this figure is. So say if it's a 24RI uh, LPG, you're looking at figures of greater than minus 4.1. But if you're looking at a natural gas 12 kilowatt boiler, you're looking at three, a figure of greater than minus 3.6. Now you will only find this test point on Worcester boilers. And this is there so to tell us whether we need to take the baffles out or not. So if you get the wrong reading here, then you'll need to strip the baffles out, which we've just shown. So, that is the uh, flue test point. Now I keep going on about the sweep test, okay? So the sweep test is designed for testing the seals going round the boiler. So with the cover on, with the appliance running on full rate, um, we will be checking to see whether we've got any carbon monoxide coming out through here, okay? So we would do it for two minutes and check to see if we've got any CO coming out through here or coming through the, the casing. We would also check here to make sure we've got nothing coming through the seal and the seal's good. Okay. And um, we're checking this seal here as well. So we're looking for a CO of less than 10 parts per million for the case seals and the top here. Now we're also checking to see whether we've got any gas escaping here. Okay, so we could have unburnt gas coming out here or we could have carbon monoxide coming out of here or carbon dioxide. So we need to test this. So this sweep test is now becoming very important with GasSafe about to issue a technical bulletin with uh, Worcester already doing a technical bulletin on it to check this seal to make sure it's correct. You must follow the guidelines from the manufacturers. But the sweep test for the seal is a two minute test and we're looking for less than 10 parts per million CO coming out of there. We should also sweep the turret as well and the test points here. And if we've got more than uh, three parts per million uh, CO, then we should be really investigating why we're getting that, even though they do say uh, the sweep test is as long as we're getting figures of less than 10 parts per million CO, then we're, we can do it safe. I would be saying if you've got more than three, then you're probably less the test point off, which is getting quite common now for engineers. So always remember the last test you would do on a boiler is make sure you do the sweep test. Now you've just finished watching this video on the inside a boiler casing on this Buster RIE only boiler. If you've enjoyed this film, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, get subscribing and ring that notification bell because we upload videos every Wednesday. So, as usual, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, see you next Wednesday on the next video. Cheers.